RPG and Life Sim, My Time at Porsche, has just been ported to the App Store for iPhone and iPad. It has been designed and developed for iOS by Pixmain and Pathia Games. Today we're going to have a look at how they've optimized the game for iOS and how it performs on a range of devices. After the PC and console versions of My Time at Porsche were launched a few years ago, Pixmain helped Pathia Games to quickly start working on porting the game to mobile. My Time at Porsche for iOS was created under Unity 2018 and is powered entirely with the Metal Framework, with iCloud backup between devices supported too. The porting process wasn't always easy, mind you, as they had to do some polygon reduction, get the UI production right, and do general optimizations for certain angles and scenarios. All this took over a year. One of the main hurdles when going into development was the landscape, which was optimized specifically for PC and was a big performance hog on mobile devices. The game has to process four square kilometers and rendering this can be a big hurdle. The open world contains detailed post-apocalyptic ruins, rocks, fully realized towns and architecture, flowing rivers, all sorts of plants, and lush green fields. To showcase all this, they completely remodeled the landscape under Unity to improve the performance on iOS. This also meant they did not have to compromise much on draw distance, which devs often do for their mobile games to improve performance. For example, you can travel up very high, far away from the town of Porsche, and it will still be visible. It's not always perfect, mind you, as some textures and NPCs will still appear in late. It's evident on every performance quality mode too. Hopefully this is something that can be fixed in the future because it's very noticeable. Remodeling the landscape also meant totally recreating grass. The Nintendo Switch version did not have grass in the landscape, but they wanted to include it on iOS. Having grass not only looks better, but is also an important indication of season changes. Another key issue to get around was memory. As we've discussed in previous performance reviews, such as Definity Original Sin 2 for iPad, one of the issues with optimizing a game for iPhone and iPad is having limited system memory and an absence of swappable memory on these devices. Thankfully, for my time at Porsche, they managed to get the game to take up only 1.5 gigabytes of memory on iOS. That being said, as we'll discuss later in the video, if you have a device that has only around 1.5 gigabytes of memory, that is the bare minimum to run the game and it will run it at a lower quality. The game's storage is also considerably reduced here. Now yes, the storage space taken by the game on your device might increase slightly over time, but we're talking like 100 megabytes at most. Basically, what I'm trying to get across here is that you almost get the same game as found on PC, with 100% of the same content, except that it has touch controls. The mobile design was done specifically considering a touchscreen scenario, so because of this, controller support is still a work in progress. Right now, only basic functions can be performed using a controller, moving, interacting, and so forth. Any action that requires the use of the UI is not supported by the controller. I hope this is something that can be fully supported in the future, as for me, this game would work much better with a controller. The game has three performance options on offer that you can switch between under the game's options menu. Keep in mind, all modes still have a 30 FPS cap. Better frame rate decreases the quality of the visuals and improves the smoothness of the game as much as possible. Balance ensures the best picture quality after a stable number of frames. High graphics disregards game speed to improve the game visuals as much as possible. 
On new devices, it looks like the game will aim for native resolution, such as an iPhone 12 Pro or iPad Pro 11 inch from 2021. Whereas recent low-end devices or slightly older devices such as an iPhone SE second gen or iPhone XR get 70% of native resolution. When you first launch the game, My Time at Porsche will analyze your hardware and choose the best performance mode for your device. The default performance mode chosen depends on the RAM of your device though. While you can manually change the performance mode at any time, it's maybe not advised to avoid thermal throttling and, well, performance issues. Devices with more than 3.2 gigabytes of RAM will by default play at high graphics performance and will get 30 FPS on average. Devices with up to 2 gigabytes of RAM will by default play at balanced performance and will get 27 to 30 FPS on average. And devices with less than 2 gigabytes of RAM will by default play at better frame rate and will get 22 FPS on average. It's worth noting, devices with low RAM may experience crashes and, as I'm sure you've seen, no iOS device is currently able to get a completely locked 30 FPS. It will go down the most when you engage in combat, dropping into the low 20s sometimes. It's not very noticeable on an iPhone, but much more on an iPad due to their larger screen real estate. It's a shame that the game isn't targeting a higher FPS than 30, especially on high-end devices. Maybe in the future, with some more optimization, Devices with over 4 or 6 gigabytes of memory could achieve a higher frame rate, such as 60. If that is not a possibility, at least just provide a more stable 30 FPS. Have you played My Time at Porsche on your iPhone or iPad? If so, how is it performing for you? At the end of the day, in my opinion, the game is another good showcase to developers interested in iPhone and iPad as a viable option for porting their 3D indie games. I hope more can follow suit. Anyway, big thanks to Pixmain for collaborating on this video with me and for answering all my questions. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name is Stewie and thanks for watching.